Good morning. Hi cubies and newbies. I am Sunshine and I am here to play with my Rubik's Cube. Remember this is a toy. <laughs> if you get frustrated with it, put it down, take a nap. Pick it up later. Um, I, it is, today is Thursday? Yes. Thursday? So, um, Monday I did the, Monday I did the corners. Tuesday I did the yellow and white edges. And Wednesday I did the opposite, the side edges, which solved all of these. And now we're left with these ones. Today I am doing the diagonal centers. Oh, sure, why not? Um, today I'm doing the diagonal centers. Um, which only work on the even, evens, even cubes. Um, da, 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 da. This one actually is not a scramble. This is my, my logo. So uh, it is done by using formula A twice, once on these four squares and once on these four squares. So move the piece away, move the space down, move the piece in, move the space back up again, move the piece away, move the space down, move the piece into the space, and this piece in the space back up again. So that was just my pattern. Here we go. We're dealing with um, the the uh, diagonal cubes. Uh, here is an example of how the formula A can be used, but only on the first layer, uh, first color, because it messes up that the other sides and you don't want to do that. So um, for, for here, for example, I can move this piece away, this piece down, this piece into the space, and the piece in the space back up again and reset. But you can only do that for one color, so I only do that for my whites. Um, then, with white to the left, it doesn't really matter what you do. You just pick a piece at random or by order. It doesn't matter. You pick a piece that's wrong. Here's a red piece. It's on the front. I want it, it my, my formula B will move it from the front to the top, so I want to move the red corners and edges, the red face to the top, like so. Uh, the first blue arrow, everything from here on out is going to be a formula B. The first blue arrow uh, for the centers, we want it to set where we're going to change. So we're move, this is the cube we're moving up. And it's going to line it up with here. So, hi, Doug. So, up, over, up, and down, and down. How have you been? Um, when I was creating it, I only did Formula B. I did not do the mirrors and the and the pair the the others of Formula B. So, for example, if I had this cube. Uh, I would formula B to move it over to here and then up to here. So I would apply it to the yellow here, which would move the orange and away up, in, up, away, down, in, down. And then I would use this orange to displace probably the blue. Up, up, down, down. Mirror and inverse. Thank you. I know I know words. <laughs> Just not all the time. Hey, um, I wanted to show you. Here's my, my here's you we were talking about super flips yesterday. Here's my my gimmicks. Um, and I did a super, wait, no, I didn't. I did a super flip on it.
evidently I didn't because the last layer is not correct. I was going to ask you if you had a pattern for it, if it had a pattern to undo it rather than just soldering it to it. So I will play with that more later. So here's an orange. Um, it's in. I, I put it in my upper left corner and up, up, down, down, and there it is. Uh, here, green goes in the upper left. I actually watched someone show an algorithm for doing super flip on Omega. It was very <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, okay, so upper left corner, up, up, down, down, upper left corner, meaning I can put this cube here so that it will place next time, which I'm going to do. I'm going to put it right there. So start there, up, up, down, down, set the top, and now this is in my upper left corner, and I can use it to bring the orange down, up, up, down, down, yeah, my, my brain, <laughs> I don't memorize long things anymore. Okay, here is a yellow, I want it, I want to if I change this blue, it'll come over to here where it can be placed. So line it up, 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 down, down. There's more think ahead that does with only doing B and not inverse their mirrors. So here's the blue. I want to bring down either the orange or the white. White is already solved. So line it up, up, up down, down, set the top. Um, okay, this green is going to go in, if it's an upper left corner, it's either gonna displace the red or I'm going to change this blue and put it here. Okay, um, up, up, down, down, and then this one is in the upper left corner. Um, up, up, down, down. Uh, okay. This will move these three around. Up, up, down, down, and up, up, down, down. Okay. Now I'm stuck with, I've got a blue here. The blue is in the bottom corner. The, so, and since I'm only doing formula B, I'm gonna take this red and I'm going to place it here so that it will be in the upper left corner to place over there. So that I can do it just using formula B. Line it up, 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 down, down, and now it is in my upper left corner, so I can do it this way. Um, that's because I'm demonstrating how I, when I was first writing this method, I didn't, had to, wanted to demonstrate whether or not I could do it just using formula A and formula B. I'm, I am just still doing a setup move. My setup move is always the top row though. But, I, but this is just to demonstrate that I can do it with just B and not using the mirrors, mirrors or inverses because that's what I was, that's the challenge, that's the 
level I set for myself when I was creating the formula. But uh, when I'm teaching it, I just, you know, I just teach the inverse. I just let the first up be where it's going to land and the second up be where it began from. So this was just playing on the hard level to see whether I could do it with just A and B. That is not how I actually teach now. So um, I can do the formula A, but only for one side. So if I, when I'm teaching, I don't usually teach the formula A. So um, I'll bring the row down. One, two, three. Anything but yellow, put it back up again. Just bring it down, do one, two, there we go. Set the corners, set the edges again. There's one more. Out, down, in, up. And so formula A, you can only work on one side. Um, again, I demonstrated that I could do it with just using formula B. For example, um, I could use, since these are on the bottom and not the top left corner, I could use this one up, up, down, down. But it's okay to just use, do the setups. I can work in the bottom, that's fine. So up, up, down, down. It's just with brand newbies, I'm pointing to the arrows as I go, and so they, they don't, they don't uh, in, intuit the mirror. Up. So I was st more strict on myself with what moves I could make when I was creating the method um, than I am when I'm teaching the method now because I, it, it's more relaxed. So I was just demonstrating that if I needed to, I could do it with just A and just B. All right, and so that's that. Those are the diagonal centers. And for this one, I'm going to do the edges and I'll do the centers tomorrow. So, unless you want to do something else. How are you, Doug? Oh, um, novelty item. I showed my 10 by 10 yesterday. This is my 11 by 11 and it was I bought it in a set I didn't you know I just got let me you know, my kid died or I'm selling all his Rubik's cubes kind of thing um, and so he had he had gotten he lost pieces and had pl bought the replacement stickers to fix them so the greens are not consistent color uh, the reds missing one whites missing one Orange is also not a consistent color. And it's pillowed, so I can't just tap it on the table to line things up. But it looks pretty sitting on my shelf. And yes, I have taken, I have dismantled, I have scrambled and solved it a few times. Um, but I get more out of the three by nine than I do the large, just large cubes because I kind of get bored because it just, it's like, okay, <laughs> I'm done. I'll put it back and come back to it later. So, uh, all right. Between the red and the green over here, I want to find red and green that are don't fit on this side. So there's one. One, two, Read this. So these ones. Um, let's look at this one. This one is a correct piece. So I can move it over here to displace other things. So I'm going to move these three cubes as one piece. Um, and that's done by, by these two cubes. The front, the top back and the front bottom down are going to switch. So I 
since these want to go here, I put the space down and the cubes to the back. I don't care what happens to this piece because it's not being directly affected. Then I do formula B adapted, meaning two across instead of one. First up, second up, first down, second down. If I look, two of these have been placed now. So I look for between the red and, and blue. Um, I, I will, I'm looking at four different sides. So I turn it three times to see one. There's one. I'm going to save that. Two. I'm not going to save that one yet. Three. Okay, so that one's correct. That one is correct. This one does not need to, dis to display, so I'm only going to work with these two. So the space goes down, the piece goes to the back, and I'm dealing with these two. So up, up, down, down. Making progress. All of these need to be displaced. So one, two, and keep that one, three. So, all right. All three of them need to be displaced, so I'm going to displace them with correct cubes to get incorrect ones out. Up. Up. Down. Okay, looking between the orange and green, this is a good one. One, that's another one. One, two, three. Okay, so these three are all going to go here. So separate them down and back. So these two. Up. Down, down. Okay, those ones are done. We only need one piece here. And it is in this row. Round it. Separate them. This is the piece. So up. in this row. There it is. So this is the piece. I separate them down and back. Up. Up. Down. Down. Okay. This one is correct. I'm only looking at these two rows. So one, two, three. There we go. These two. Separate them. Up, up, down, down. These left is done, 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 done. Left is correct. Now we look to see whether the white, the right is correct. Um, we're looking each row. Each row has a parity. Each row has one side that's correct and one side that's not correct. So I'm going to line the parodies up. So these ones are correct. These ones need to be flipped. And so I displace their mirror 
by a quarter turn. And I do formula B to move these out where I can place them correctly. Up, up, down, down, and these pieces here now want to go over here. So I'm placing these three, separate them to be down and back, up, up, down, down. When I finish this step, it will be an odd number of formula B's, which means these two will have switched an odd number of times and be correct when I'm done. Green and yellow to go here, separate them. Up, up, down, down. These cubes will go here, separate them. Up, up, down, down. Look at them, we bring them to the front where I can look at them. These cubes are going here, separate them. Up, up, it fell off. Down, down, and now that my left is correct again, it's a simple matter of lining up the edges, and they are correct. Okay, that's it for today. Um, I was going to show my Go Cube. But I have forgotten my password, so I have to reset that. I'll show it tomorrow. Good morning, good morning, Erin Silliness. How are you? I am fine. I am happy. I am. <laughs> I'm living the life. I've. I'm. This is. This is what I. 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 This is what I've always wanted to do. Not streaming, because streaming wasn't a thing. But I have enjoyed teaching the cube since I was back in middle school when the first cube first came out. And so, sorry, my kitty distracted me. So I am Sunshine, I don't know if you've seen met me before. I am Sunshine and this, these are the two formulas for the AB cube method, which I created and published online in 2020 um, at abcube.how, which is my Wix site. And you can also find me on YouTube if you look, check in my bio here. And um, I also have a page on speed, speedsolver.com. One for me as creator of this and one for this as the, it is a beginner's method for advanced cubing because just these two patterns show how to do every cube, um, every n by n cube. This is not this. This one has banding, and so for this one, there's a minor adaptation you have to make. Can I solve the three by three, like this one? I am not a speed. I'm not a speed solver. Uh, well, depending. Uh, sometimes I time myself, and sometimes I try to do better. So I am sometimes a speed cuber, um, but my. My average is about a minute and a half for, for solving the three by three, but my average is about an hour and a half. Oh, oh, you're correcting the URL. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me honest. <laughs> okay, yes. So, but an hour and a half to teach the cube, um, and that's teach the cube with, you know, any n by n size. It's, I, it's usually done in two one-hour sessions. The first hour I teach the corners. Please solve the three by three. Sure. Do you have a favorite scramble I should use or should I just randomize it? Looking 
everything away. Do, 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 do. Okay, that looks scrambled. Um, okay, are you going to time me, Erin? I'll be under not most streamers. I do. I know. I know. And I don't have that because I don't care enough. <laughs> so, let's go. method do I use? I use my own method, the ABQ method right here. Um, I, I just use these two formulas, commutations, for this cube, this cube, this cube, this cube. I don't have any, I don't have a parity algorithm because I don't need it. And it is, in my opinion, a darn sight easier than using the beginner's method. So, um, just A and B. Um, form. I start by the corners, and I use form. I pick a corner, a color. I can be color neutral, but uh, when I'm teaching, I use yellow because all of the cubes have yellow, and not all of them are standardized colors. So, and the and a cube also has has yellow and white left and right, so I start with those colors. You use CFOP. So um, I use formula A to bring my my active color, which is yellow, to the top, and then if the sides don't, if they're not correct to each other, I use formula B to move these three around, and then formula A to bring the color back to the top again. And when my c c first four corners are correct to each other, okay. I'm confused then because I thought that CFOP was a beginner's method because you do the F2L. F2L is the beginner's method. I know I know things, I just can't keep them straight in my head. I'm, I have fibro fog. Um, so I do the corners, and when the first four corners are done, I put them down. I do the second four corners the exact same way as the first four corners. And then when the eight corners... CFOP is an advanced method? Okay. All right. Then I've been telling people wrong because... But this is, this is only for the, the three by three. And you have to use more, memorize more methods for more. But I just use A and B. 
Um, and so once the corners are done, then I use Formula B. When I use Formula B on the top and the two, two outer columns, it does the corners. When I use Formula B on the outside and an inner column, it does edges. And when I use Formula B on two inner columns, it does centers. And so with just Formula A and just Formula B, I can solve any size cube. It, and when I get a parity, 23 seconds. <sighs> yes. Awesome. That is very impressive. When I get a parity, it is always, since the Formula B always moves three cubes around, and they're always on the same layer, so if you're, if you're working with corners, they're all the, they're corners. If you're working with edges, they're edges. If you're working with centers, they're centers. But anytime it looks like there's two pieces and only two pieces that need to be switched, like, like a parity, it is because the invisible center is off by a quarter turn, and you can't see it, but the cube knows it. So if you move the center, one quarter turn, then, okay, so let's say for instance these two cubes are wrong. Or on the corner, let's say these two cubes are, these two cubes need to be switched. If I do a quarter turn, then one is correct and three are not correct, and those can be placed. So if there's two, a parity, then if you make a quarter turn, then one of them is correct and three of them are not, and those can be properly placed. So rather than memorize a parity algorithm, I just make a quarter turn and then resolve it. So I, I don't teach the parity algorithm, and when I teach people, they don't need to use the parity algorithm, and they just with A and B, they can walk away and solve. I, I, when I, you know, I usually I let them pick from my collection of cubes. One, one, one girl walked away with my six by six, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you feel confident, so, you know, because I've seen you solve it, so okay. Um, all right, so CFOP is so I'll have to look at beginner's method again, but um, cage first. Yes, I'm yes. Uh, I do the corners, then I do the corners because they all have corners. Everything, if you should, I can solve them all the same way. They all have corners, and then this is solved, and the rest of them have corners. The corners dictate what sides are going to be, rather than in the olden days, the center dictated what the sides were going to be. And then when we didn't have an absolute center anymore, then we had to memorize the which orientation everything went in and, and forget that. Just do the corners and then place the edges where they want to be and that way you have the yeah, you see the parity as it comes up and you can solve it before you've done the edges so you don't have to resolve the edges I always do the edges last and I also don't pair up my edges and then place them like if I don't do the reduction method because to me it just seems redundant to pair them up and then place them when I can just place each one individually as I find it. I also don't look for a specific cube like, oh, where are my two yellow, where, here's a red and yellow, where's my other red and yellow? I just place, I just place the red and yellow where it is, and when I find it, and then find a cube that's wrong and place it, and I just place whatever cube I have, it catches my eye, and so I'm not spending look ahead time, look trying to find where things are and put them in the right place. I just find a cube that's wrong and throw it where it belongs. And the cube places it where it wants to be. Um, I was told by <laughs> someone when I when I first when I someone told me that my method reminded them of the uh, Verasano method from the 80s, and so I looked up who Verasano was because I did not remember <laughs> that he was the first he was the world record holder that I watched live on TV <laughs> when I was six when I was his 16 um, back in 81. So 15, I was 15, he was 16 something. He was a year older than me, I think. But uh, I thought that, but I, back then I thought I was doing really well because I was down to, I was under five minutes, you know. I was like three, three or four minutes to solve a cube and I thought that was really, because back then 
just solving the cube puts you in genius status. You didn't have, you didn't have, in, in, how fast didn't matter. And so but people were, people went in directly into, well, what patterns can you do? What can you make it look like? After you've solved it, what can you do with it? And that was creating patterns like checkerboard and diagonals and stripes and boxes and all of these other things. And then came the first world's record and then it speed solving became a thing. But uh, also, um, shortly after that, the mosaics became a thing. Um, I was not fast, but I loved, I, I loved teaching the cube. It was not my own method back then. It was this, a little paperback book you bought at 7-Eleven. But uh, I w everyone had a cube at school and I could solve it. I'd be walking down the street and people would stop me and say, did you take the stickers off or did you take it apart and put it back together? Because those were the only two ways of solving a cube back then. I said, no, I actually solved it there. No, you did it. Give me the cube. So I'm like, here. And I'd give them the cube and they'd scramble it. And they give it back to me, and of course they would think I had to reverse what they did. And since they, I'm going to do more. You can't. I'm going to do. Hello, hi. And so I would. I was pretty good. Do I have a? Okay. See, I get confused. Um, which is the Gigaminx? Is this the Megaminx? Is the Gigaminx like five across instead of three across? Because if so, I want one. <laughs> Also, you told me about, uh, I think it was Melissa, oh, it's a Megaminx, Megaminx, I would like a Gigaminx, I would like one, I will have to find one and buy it, or have someone give me one, um, but, uh, yeah, so I have this one, I have, I have seen the 5x5 five five and I need to have it, um, this one, this one is, I think, my favorite. The, 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 this one, this one or that one, either one of those. I think that's my favorite. It depends. Sometimes my favorite is this one, uh, the GAN. Of all the bump cubes I have, the GAN is my favorite because it has, it snaps, it sets, sets itself where it's supposed to be, which, which is essential for a bump cube because if you don't have it all lined up, it's hard to turn. Here's my 5 by bump cube. It's not commercially available. Someone took a regular 3 by 3 and 3D printed the rest to go onto it. So um, that's fun. I do that probably once a month. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I used to have a gear cube. I don't have that anymore. I lost it. You, Uxin. Okay. I will write that down. Uxin Gigaminx. Okay. All right. I will do that. But uh, so I do need a Gigaminx. Um, I do want to have that. And I also looked up what you told me about the two by two by two by two. And oh my gosh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um. In, you know, I'm not sure that I'm going to play with it as a two by two by two by two, but I, because of the way it's set up, I'm sure that I could take it and just take two by two and have tw 27 of them and put them together as a magnetic block and put stickers on them and treat it like a cube that can be taken apart like the original two by two. So that's what I want to do with that. Uh, I'm a little bit intimidated by the process of putting it together. I know it's twenty dollars more if she puts them together and but if I, I can just buy the kit and assemble them I'm a little bit intimidated by having to assemble it because it looks like it's very complex to get the plastic pieces set in the correct way and I don't want to break it but I really I want to get those those that's on my to do on my shopping list she had like thousands manufactured and just ships out of her home when people order Right, I know she has. So, so you, you, you assembled it yourself? 
You did, because it only took you one sitting to assemble it. How was it difficult to put problems not good? Okay. <laughs> I it's hard to restrain myself when it comes to cubes that I want. Um I'm glad it wasn't difficult. That get, in, that encourages me. Um because she said, if you buy four sets, I'll give you a fifth one free. And I'm like, let's see if I had five sets. That's what, that's almost <laughs> true. <laughs> Great answer. Well, that's almost, uh, almost three complete 27 sets of cubes. So it's like, if I bought five of these two by two by two sets, I would have almost three magnetic, two, three by threes. Or I would have a four by four. I could have a four by four. If I bought four sets, I'd have a four by four magnetic cube. And that just sounds so fun for me. I want to do that. I'm going to do that. I'll be, I'll save up for that for my birthday or Christmas. But thank you for telling me about that because it is very, very cool. All right. Um, I am going to go start my day and uh, let you guys get off to what you to finish the rest of yours i thank you for joining me thank you for chatting me it's fun for me thank you guys and today is thursday so i'll be back tomorrow um morning as every i weekday mornings and then five friday evening and saturday morning is more talking like this and showing stuff i'm sure i could put it together i'm sure i could put it together I know, I saw, I watched it. I watched her do it. And, and she, and, yeah. But I have, I do have fun with magnets. So thank you for turning me on to that. I will definitely be going in that direction. Okay. Um, if you're new, check me out in my bio. Go check out my, my, Wix, check out my Wix site and my YouTube. If you want to. Only if you want to. Um, hey, I passed yesterday, you guys got me, um, the Twitch has milestones that you get, and one of them is like have 50 followers, and I have like 21 followers, but one of them is have five people chatting at the same time, and I got six people chatting at the same time yesterday, so you guys, was it yesterday, it was one, time, one day this week, I don't remember. Nifty notice, okay, so that is definitely on my list of things that I must purchase. Oh goody! I'm glad. How did you? I'm glad you stumbled on it. How did you find it? Probably from speedsolving.com. Oh, on speedsolving. Oh, are you talking about Wikipedia or speedsolving.wiki? Because I am indeed on Wikipedia for the Professor's Cube. Yes, if you go to wikipedia.com and look for Professor's Cube, I am one of, there's like, there, were, there was like five methods of solving the five by five, and I, I put myself in there as the sixth method, and that was like two years ago, three years ago, so no one is correcting me. <laughs> But yes, this is the be a beginner's method for advanced cubing. Speedsolving.com wiki. Thank you. I'm glad you found that. Thank you for letting me know. Your current... Oh, the current world's record. I knew it was under five seconds. What, did Felix break it again? The 3.47? Because that is just, that is, that is just no. <laughs> that is just insane. Yeah, once you start going faster than the than my eyes can follow it, I just think it's a magic trick. <laughs> oh, Yushin, okay. I know there's, okay, there, there was a movie made 
about speed solving, and it was Felix, somebody, and someone autistic. Don't remember his name. Do I have stickerless cubes? Um. I, I don't have all of my cubes here. This is a sticker list. Um, I, have, I have the phantom cube, which <laughs> I can't actually use because my hands are too cold. <laughs> Max Park. So it, it was about Max and Felix. That is correct. And so the new world record is someone is Yu Sheng Du, but it, it's less than four seconds. I knew it was less than five, but that is just amazing. Yes. I have I have other mirrors. I have other mirrors, but they don't lot. They don't snap into place. So the Gan is my favorite. And it does. It snaps into place. It's my favorite. I love it so much. My second favorite is my second favorite. Is it now? Are they chimera cubes or bump cubes? I've seen them both. I've seen them well used both ways. But this is my second one, and I like it because it can be solved two different ways. You can do it this way, or you can do it by color, and uh, it looks wild. I, I like. I like. I don't. Know. Okay, so one thing that I like to do with these is I'm going to do I'm going to do boxes on uh, checkerboard two sides And then I like to put them together like jigsaw puzzles. Okay. Gan is the best through by three. I have are these also Gans? Hold on. Yes, these are also Gans. I have I have these are Gans. So this is a stickerless. This one's stickerless, and I don't know why there's a three. There's just a single color. It's it's fun for being able to show moves without scram without scrambling it. Like I can show people out, down, in, up, and I can. So why did they do this? Why did they make it? I mean, I love it, but why did they? Is this so that people can sticker their own? Eight people have sub five in in the comp now. It's amazing, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> try it with an original Rubik's cube. <laughs> try, 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 try it with those clunky old things. <laughs> then you'll be more impressed with uh, Jeffrey Verasano, who solved it in twenty three seconds. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, this one, the solid color one, yeah, I like it. I've seen people are calling them force cubes, and they've got like a purple one. I'm like, oh, I want a purple cube because not that you could guess purple. I like, I like the color purple. You know, what can I say? Sticker again, keychain. I, if you have your own method, I think the algorithm you have, you should explain it with Rubik's notation. Up front, uh, up front, back, right, down, and left. I absolutely can. I absolutely can. But I don't require newbies to learn the standardized notation. And when I'm talking to people who know the standardized notation, I do. Um, for example, when my sister calls me um, from her road trips, she, she has a cube by cube, a cube, three by three, and she knows how to solve two rows. And so whenever she's on a road trip and she's bored, <clears throat> she'll call me and she'll say, okay, um, my top layer looks like this. What do I do? And I will walk her through the standardized notation of what to do. Picture's okay. 
that's I agree with you. You are not wrong. Picture is okay, but algorithms with notation is faster than using pictures because you have trained your mind to see the, the algorithms and know what they are. But uh, I teach brand new people who haven't learned the algorithms, and um, so this this is more. And the reason why I don't is because this way it translates to this cube and to this cube as well. I just look at the front as rows and columns and if if this is the cube that I want to move or let's do an edge piece. QB. QB. Yes, I know. I'm not using the right terminology. I'm old. <laughs> you just have to bear with me. Um, but if I want to move, if I want to place this one over here, my formula B, the arrow represents the single slice that you're moving, and the line represents everything else. So I don't draw five lines, I just draw, draw the two lines, and it translates into this. And the, the the it's always the top row, and it's always two columns, and the dic the cube dictates what those columns are. For example, this piece, want red and blue, wants to end up over here. So this is the first column where it's going to end up, and this is where it began. So this is the second column. So I, with just my formula B. I say, okay, they we're using this row and this column and this column. And slide up, I slide up, slide down, slide down. So when I'm teaching someone, I don't have to, after I've named, after I've taught them the names and the positions and the clockwise and counterclockwise of this, I don't have to then say, okay, now this is a capital R and this is a lowercase r. Um, I don't, I sidestep that and just go to, here's a 5x5, five five, you can now solve it. And yes, it works on 7 by Hello Kitty! You, I'm sorry, her staging area where she likes to jump into is cluttered with cubes right now. You can come. Come on, jump in. You can come. It's okay. It's okay. You can come. Hi. Hi. Okay. So, yes. Yes. Um, and, and you will be happy to know that when I went to the writing of my book, this is one of my earlier drafts, um, I did include, in, with, e with each picture, I did include... Um, the standardized notation for people who already know how to do the cube in my in the book when in one of the printings that I did of it one of the hand printings that I did of it um, I have several iterations of what it looked like before I published online including a spreadsheet not a spreadsheet a flowchart I know words, I just don't use them correctly sometimes. Um, so I broke down the corners into a flow chart. Start with no discernible pattern, and then you look at these two cubies, and is there your active color yellow on either one of these two cubies? And if no, rotate the bottom row until, and then look at it again until the answer is yes. When the answer is yes, then is your active color on top? If yes, slide it out of the way to protect it. Is it active color on top on all four corners? No. Then look at these two and keep working on it. Um, if, the active, if the active color is not on top, do formula A and then see if it's on top. And if it is, until it is, and then slide it out of the way and protect it. So this is the flow chart four corners. It takes you from no discernible pattern to all four corners on top to looking at the sides to see whether they match to each other. 
And if they don't, then you do formula B, and then A to bring the color back to the top again. Mm -hmm. So this, this takes you from no discernible pattern to, to colors on top, to colors matches, to it looks like that, and you go to the next page. And I never got as far as the next page. Yes, <laughs> flow charts, remember them? All right, let's see. Um, blind solving, I have no idea because I do not understand blind solving at all. But here's, here's the thing. Um, I know it's not great for speed, I know it's not great for other things, but I think that it is perfect for taking you down to the ABC level, if you'll excuse the pun, and just understanding how the cube intuitively works. Because you're only ever moving three pieces with this, and you're only ever moving the three pieces that you want to move. So you don't, with the, with other methods, you, not only do you have to memorize, um, let's say, uh, let's say for the last four corners, you have to memorize one if you go clockwise, one if you go counterclockwise, and another one if the if the have to, it's if the two t opposites are correct, and you have to deal with the other opposites. So there's several patterns, several algorithms you have to memorize for depending on what you're doing. And not only do you have to memorize each one, but you have to memorize when to use each one, and you also have to memor know which order to use it, because if you do this one, it will mess up this part of the cube that, that hopefully you haven't solved yet. And this one, you can, do the cor you can do the corners first or last, it doesn't matter, because it's not going to do anything to the edges. You can do the edges first or last. Um, it matters only that you sometimes, if you, if you get a parody, if you get a uh, if you get a parity, it'll show up in the corners, and you have to undo it. So I do corners and then edges because that way, if the parity shows up, I can undo it right away instead of having to solve it later on. And so I do corners, edges, and then centers, and because that way, the uh, if I do the centers first and I have a parity, then when I'm solving fixing the parity, the centers confuse me because they look like I can just undo my row. Um, step, it is, it can be a stepping stone to anything else. In fact, my, my biggest success story, a uh, young lad named Sean, um, he was on the spectrum. I said, hey, you would love doing the cube. And he said, nope, which, I, you just magic, I can't do the cube. And so I put the cube in his hand and I showed him, you know, I mean, he's highly functional, he's not. But I showed him and he's like, oh, I understand, that worked. And he understood, he was able to see how the cube moves with these. And then he went home, went on, went on the YouTube, uh, became a speed cuber, left me in the dust. He now focuses on the fewest moves challenge. I teach using the A and the B and that's all. And I know that those both qualify as commutators. So I teach just A and just B, and I don't teach a par parity algorithm because the parity can always be undone with a single quarter turn of the slice that the parity is on. And this is a stepping stone, so this is a stepping stone to anything. Um, and for me it's easier, instead of, I mean, I, instead of looking at, for, so let's say I'm working on my last four corners, the way I learned with that book was if you want to move them clockwise, you do this. If you want to move them counterclockwise, you do this. If you want to move them diagonally, you do this way. So I had to learn like, you know, and then then for the edges, the last four edges, to, to move them clockwise, you go this way, and counterclockwise, you do this way. And if you do, if they are all need to be flopped, if two of them need to be flopped, you do this one. If all four of them need to be flopped, you do this one. And so everything, you know, when I learned, when I figured out that my A and B worked for that, then I'm like, oh, that means I don't have to remember which one of these algorithms to use for which. I just do B, and it's either solved or I do B again, and then it's solved. Commutator is swapping two pieces without an effect. That's what I'm doing. That's what this does. Only it does not swap two pieces. It really swaps three. And the thing, the reason why it looks like it's two is because two of them are the same color. Let me demonstrate. Okay. Here is, here is a yellow piece. Here's an orange piece. 
and here is the blue piece. Okay, now I think that I'm going to swap these two pieces. I line it up, I go up, slide up, slide, reverse down, and down, and lo and behold, <coughs> it swapped these three pieces. This, this cube went over here. I'll show you. If I put this cube where this piece is, this piece is not going to come where this piece is. This piece is going to come over here. And this piece is going to come over here. Up, up, down, down. The, this blue came went here, this blue went here, this orange went there. It always moves three pieces. And this, it always, always, always moves three pieces. <coughs> because there are always three pieces that need to be solved. If it looks like there's two pieces that need to be solved, it's because the invisible center that you can't see is a quarter turn off. So do this and you'll never have to do a parity algorithm again. Um, if it looks like, if, if do, I, do I have a parity set up anywhere? I don't have a parity set up anywhere. All right, I'm gonna do a parity. And it doesn't matter what the parity looks like because the more you solve it, the, it, it's all caused by the same thing. Yeah, so that commutation, we use a commutation. Um, I use it all the time. It always moves three pieces. Um, okay, so here's a parity because my yellow and white, orange and white is where the yellow and white is, want, yellow and orange wants to be, yellow and orange is where these two want to be, the rest of my edges are all correct to each other, um, it's just, it looks like there's just two cubes I need to switch. However, if you move the, the, the if you move the slice that has the parity on it, one quarter turn, either this way or this way, it doesn't matter, if you move it one quarter turn, then one cube is now correct, and three cubes are now incorrect, and those three cubes can be placed. So, let's place these three cubes. Just using formula B. and the parity is gone. The parity is gone because I did an even number of, of quarter, turn, quarter turns. I did one to create the parity, I did another one to undo the parity. It doesn't matter which direction you go. If the, if the invisible center is an odd number of turns off, you will have a parity. If it is an even number of turns off, it is correct or you do not have a parity. So if this this is, is possible with boxes and this is possible with boxes, but this is not and it will give you a parity. So all you have to do is a single quarter turn and the parity is undone and you can solve it. So you can memorize a parity, which is great if you've, if you're, you know, if you're timing yourself. But yes, form, form, it always swaps, formula B, there we go, always swaps three pieces, not two. The third one is, I mean, this one's going to swap this corner, this blue right here. Let me go a different color. Let me go a different color. Up, up, down, down. Okay. So <coughs> my red, my orange piece was here. 
it went here and this piece went here and this piece went here so it's three so yes um, and like I said no parody algorithms <laughs> <laughs> all right i have taken up enough time this morning thank you for thank you all for joining me you guys this is great i love it thank you um i'll be back tomorrow morning at same time and i'll be back friday evening and saturday morning for um more randomness thank you nobita thank you doug thank you are you are you a first timer are you following me yet because Please follow me if you want to. That'd be great. All right. And I, my homework then is to look up the beginner's method and to look up the gigaminks of the, <sighs> tell me again the brand name I need to get from the big gigaminks. Because I'm looking through my chat and I'm not seeing it. Yuxin. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. <coughs> thank you. I will look at that and I will, I will, I will be encouraged to get the Melissa, the two by two by two by two by two by two. Okay. All right. You guys, I'll be back here tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye.